Maybe uh, put it close yeah. in the middle, yeah. <laughs> yes, but it's been around a year and a half since I prayed over here. And uh, uh, I think was what my teacher once told me, he said the shell. And from that shell, he inspired me to travel the whole world. When he says, I'm not a friend of Allah, you've got to get rid of it. But the bit of the spirit comes to the way, the bridge of him, what he said, 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 what he said. And it was an advice that from my teacher. I took it and I traveled the whole world with that advice, understanding the part of that home, understanding what does it mean, sohbah, majid, what does it mean, by Tafri Juhamid, all those commands. But like I said, a big salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, it really is nice to see you. As Brother Bilal mentioned, the youth night, but again, we can all take the advice because the advice, it applies to all of us. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, وَإِذْ قَالَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً Yes, Salah. That when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Qur'an, and in front of all the malaika, and He says that I am going to put a person and a people that are going to be ruling this world. They are going to be the people with the power in this world. And when we say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, we understand from that verse that we, the human beings, are not the only world. There are the world of the animals. There are the world of the jinn. There are the world that so many different worlds we have in this one earth that we live in. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, out of all these different worlds that we're going to be in, all the, all the worlds that are comprised that are going to be in this earth, the kings of this world, the ones who are going to lead this world, they're going to dictate the rules of this world, the ones that are going to come up with the big projects in this world, are the human beings. And that by itself <coughs> is a big shock that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to the human beings. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَاسْتَخْفَرَ لَكُمْ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا مِنْ when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says He subjected everything in this earth and everything in the heavens, all of it, for the human beings, it is a shock. It tells us that we are going to be the people that are going to be constructing these world, this world that we live in. We are going to be the people with the big projects in this world. We are going to be the entrepreneurs of the world, the people that are dreaming. So my question to you, Ya Shabbat, what is your dream that you have in this world? What is your big project that you have in this world? Even just a few days ago, we went camping. And when I was coming back from that camp, it was just one of the boys. The father wanted to sleep, so he was sleeping at the back. So the, the child, his son, who was in the passenger seat, and he's a very shy person. He never talks. Very, very shy person. But when there's nothing to do, you have hours on the road, you have to talk. And that's what else are you going to do? And I asked this person, what do you do? He started, yes or no question, yes, yes, no. I had to really shake him so I could sort of get what he used to do in this thing. What, what's his big project? He said, look, what I do, sometimes it's my hobby. It's what I've started. I've started a lawnmower business. Me and my friend, at this point he's only 12 years old. He said, me and my friend, every day after school, we love fishing. We love fishing. But before we go fishing, we decided, wouldn't it be great to do a little business that we do? So what he did, he said, me and my friend, we went to the shops and we went and bought a lawnmower and we sat together in the library and we watched different videos on how, what the things, what to cut, the edges you have to cut, what kind of equipment you need, and we started. And he said, subhanAllah, we, every day we would knock on the, the doors of the people. He said, every customer we would get, most of them they would accept because we're the cheapest people. Sixty dollars they would pay them both. And he said, in the day, subhanAllah, eight hundred, one thousand dollars, sometimes we would rip every day. And then we would go back to fishing. He said, this is just a hobby. That's why Imam al-Shafi, he said, تعلم فليس المرء يولد عالما وليس أخو علم فمن هو جهل. Learn, because no one was born a scholar. Learn a trade because no one was born a businessman. That day I heard, I have a dream, was the one that motivated and encouraged 
Abdullah ibn Rabi'ah. He woke up in the middle of this night. I have to go visit the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So he ran to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, ask, what do you want? And he said, I want to be your companion in Jannah. This Sahabi, he knew how to dream. If that's the one takeaway we take from that story, we take away this, that this Sahabi, he understood the meaning of what it means to be a human being on this earth, what it means to be a Muslim on this earth, what it means to be someone who dreams in this world. Because he dreamt. And he asked the Prophet this is the biggest thing. One of the, the Sahaba as well. Again, they knew how to dream. They said, I have a dream as well. And when she went to the Prophet وسلم, she said, I'm very sick. Can you cure me? And the Prophet وسلم, he said, look, if you want, I can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure you and she will cure you. But he said that if you be patient, then you'll get changed. So this, she said, no, 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 no I'm not going to ask. My dream now is to be patient. My dream is now I'm going to get gender now. My dream, all this pain, all this suffering, I'm going to endure because this is my dream. The day of I've got to see all the hard work we see when we read the seal. All this effort. Why did he help that woman? Why did he go out to all these communities to pick up that stuff for the woman? Why did he do this to help the message? Why did he give all this sadaqah? Why did he do this and why did he do that? They heard I have a dream. And what was that dream? Because I want to be the one on the day of judgment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to me, <coughs> enter in any of the eight doors of Jannah you want, however you want. When Nelson Mandela, 27 years, he was in prison. 27 years. And if you've seen the prison Nelson Mandela is in, you have to be shocked. He said, how? Not that he can endure that, but after 27 years, after, let alone two years, three years, that he doesn't come out crazy. But I have a dream that he wanted to beat the apartheid system in South Africa. Another big character, Barack Obama. Controversial figure as he may be, but it doesn't refute the fact that this person he said, I have a dream to be the first black president in a country just less than a hundred years ago. Those same black people were the slaves to the white people. I have a dream and I want to be it. We've seen examples come and go. Albert Einstein, all the Sahaba, all the people in the past, all the people that made contribution. So my question to you all, and especially to you, especially to you Dawood, and especially to you Musa, and especially to all the boys here, and the eight, and all of them here, the young and the old, what is your dream? And what project do you want to be? And do not be like the people of Quran, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, the heavens and the earth, they did not cry for them. It was the first that the Sahaba, they didn't even understand themselves. So they went to Ibn Abbas and they said, what is the meaning of this? The heavens and the earth, they did not cry for them. So Ibn Abbas said, yes. He said that every believer, every person in this earth that had a spot for him in Jannah. And that particular spot in Jannah is responsible for the provisions coming down and the good deeds to ascend. And he said that particular spot in Jannah, that cries when that person dies. Why? Because there's no good deeds ascending up. So it's like it's crying. But even how best he explains, he said that the people of Firaun, they came and they left and there was no good deeds ascending up anyway. So that place in Jannah, it didn't even cry for them at all. And when that scholar as well, he visited the graves. One of the big scholars in the past, he was visiting the graves at a particular time on one of the particular graveyards in a particular country. He was walking and subhanAllah he saw that some of the graves he was reading, one particular grave, he saw this person who was born in 1930 and he died in 1950. But the age written was that he was one year, he was one year old. And another person, 1940 to 1953. But he lived eight years of his life. So this guy he said, what is this? I don't understand. And he asked the person who managed the graves and this person said, we don't manage the graves and write the name or the number of years that this person lived from the day he was born. We measure the Nizani, the scale we use. 
is when the Islamic project really began in South Africa. Sometimes it started from one year, sometimes it didn't even start at all, sometimes he lived for 13 years, and nine of those years he was working on a project. Again, my question to you all, what is your dream and what do you want to do in your life? Again, to keep it, I don't want to keep it too long, but a very important story that I want to say, that when I went to Egypt, and when I was speaking to one of the kids, and these people, they were very poor in Egypt, especially the place that I went to, Fayoum. They were very poor, they didn't have anything. Can I ask them what they had and this thing? And they said, Hamda, we have everything. But he said, hold on a second, one thing we don't have. I said, what is it? He said, you are from Australia. I said, yes, I'm from Australia. He said, look, you have food, we have food. You have clothes, we can get clothes. You have a house, well, we have something like a house. But he said, one thing you guys have that we don't have is what is it? He said, you can drink, we cannot drink. That's it. You can dream, we cannot dream. The opportunities that we have in Australia is unbelievable. Why dream to be a politician in this country? Can you dream to be a prime minister in this country? Why dream just to be a little merchant when you can be a millionaire in this country? Legally. And not through around the other end, around the bush, you can be. Why think that you can dream in this country when you have the opportunity to do it? Be proud that you are Australian <coughs> and be proud that you are a Muslim living in this great country that we are in. And again, ask yourself this question, what is your dream and what is your life project that you want to achieve? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be amongst the entrepreneurs of this earth that makes a contribution to this world and this ummah that we live in. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our paths steadfast and make us achieve those goals that we list for ourselves. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Got the barbecue going on. Yeah.